Hey, I'm Matt from mastersketchup.com, and in my last video, I showed you how to use Quantifier, which is a premium extension um, to add cost and calculate cost in your model. And when I posted that, someone actually left a comment and said, oh, you can do a lot of that in native SketchUp. And my first reaction was like, no, you can't. I mean, there's basically just one uh, area where you can insert price for like a single component. You don't have the ability to add cost by tag or tag layer um, or material or by length or volume or um, area, all of those things. But then I started thinking about it a little bit more and I realized that's not actually true. There, there are ways for you to calculate um, prices based on length or volume and some other things by using native features in SketchUp. So in this video, I wanna share six solid tips on how you can calculate price um, through a number of different methods using just native SketchUp features. So let's go ahead and dive in. So the first thing, which is the most basic way to add cost to an object in SketchUp is to use the advanced attributes feature under components. So whenever you have a component in your model, this only works for components and not groups. Um, there's the advanced attributes uh, feature here that you can expand by clicking this button here and you can type in a price. So this will work great for just adding a fixed cost to a component um, and then creating a report showing how many of those components exist in your model and showing the price. So for this example, I just have like an anchor bolt in here. We can pretend that this is, uh, you know, like, I don't know, a shed or something. And for whatever reason, we're anchoring it down. But uh, so all you need to do is add a price here. And then if you go to file, generate report, we'll create a new template and we'll drag the entity name. Now, um, there, there is a bug here. So when you first drag a attribute, you see the, the black circle. So it doesn't let you drag it, but if you do it a second time, for whatever reason, it allows you to do it. So I don't know why they haven't fixed that yet. I've reported this bug before. Um, so we have group by entity name and then we're gonna just bring price into here. So let's run that report. So we can see the JBolt anchor has a price of $5. Now let's go ahead and copy this bolt throughout the model a few times just to see how the report is updated. So I'll just use the, the move tool with the control key to indicate I wanna copy, and I'll type in times two to indicate uh, an additional copy there. And now when we go to generate the report, I actually have to do that again from scratch because I didn't save it. So now when we uh, run the report, notice how it still says $5, even though we have additional uh, copies of that component. So to fix that, all we have to do is go back and click the little gear icon next to price and we can change um, how that attribute is displayed. So in this case, we want a total sum. So we'll select that, click accept, run report. And so now it shows a sum of the price uh, for this component. So if we wanted to, we can save the changes and we can just call this sum of price, save to model. So now all the different uh, reports that we create will appear right here. Okay, so that works great when you're adding just a fixed cost to components in the model. But for things like studs, that would be really tricky because you would have to have a different price. So like, you know, these ones are eight feet, right? So we know the price of an eight foot stud. So we could um, add that price here, but what about these uh, shorter studs here? Um, we would have to like do the math and figure out, you know, how much we want to uh, account for as far as price goes for that smaller 
uh, two by four. So it's not a real practical way to assign cost to your model. But the second tip I wanna share with you will enable you to calculate a cost of the total length of two by fours in the project. Now the way we do that is by using the length of uh, one of the axes of the component. So for example, if I jump inside this component, we can see that the length of the two by four is aligned to the blue axis. So we can actually extract the length of the blue axis of the bounding box of this component. And since, you know, two by four is essentially like a cubic shape, um, it aligns perfectly with the length of the bounding box. So let me go ahead and remove these uh, anchor bolts and let's create a new report. So we'll create a new template. We'll do entity name for group by and we'll put length of Z in the report attributes. So this is the reason why we're able to do this because under the list of attributes, we can report on the length of the X, Y, or Z axis. So let's take a look at this and see what this does for us. So a few things I want you to be aware of. Notice how um, two by four is essentially the only component being reported on. Uh, the, the model line item here just shows kind of the model context um, attributes, so we can ignore this line item. But why is there only one component being reported on when we have a bunch of different lengths uh, of two by fours in the model? Well, uh, one thing I did when I set this model up is I actually used the same component throughout the entire model. So all of these are literally the same exact two by four component, and that gives us a lot of flexibility um, in how we can group data in the report. So how am I able to have different size components of the same component? So it's as simple as using the scale tool. So when you're using the scale tool, because you're not um, opening the component to edit it, you're able to resize it without affecting the parent definition of that component. So let's go back to the report. So basically this line item is telling us the quantity of each length of two by four in the model. Now if we go back and change this to sum and run that report again, we just get a single length. So it added up all of the, the Z distance, the Z length of each component and so we know that for two by fours, we have a total of 328 feet and 11 inches. Now, the problem with this is we can't do anything with this data in SketchUp. We actually have to download the data into a CSV and then we would have to manually alter the spreadsheet to calculate a price for us. So it is possible, but it is kind of clunky. But maybe just knowing this information is helpful for you as well. All right, tip number three is creating uh, a list of quantities based on the different lengths of two by fours in the model. So to do that, we're just gonna alter this report. So we'll drag the Z length underneath the entity name in the group by section, and then we'll add quantity to the attributes. And when we run that report, we get a different uh, visualization of the data. So we can see each unique length of two by four that's in the model along with a quantity over here. All right, so let's say I have, uh, I added some two by sixes here, replaced this header. Let's see what the report will show now. Total quantity per length. So now we have each unique length of two by four and then we have each unique length of two by six here. All right, the fourth way I'm gonna show you how to calculate price is using dynamic component attributes. Now, I actually don't recommend doing this because it's really easy to um, make a mistake with dynamic components because 
I, I don't want to call them buggy. I don't know. I'll just call them buggy. They're, they don't always act predictably, uh, especially if you're making changes to the attributes uh, while you're after you've already started modeling. But let me show you how that works. So I'm just right clicking on any of the components. I'll go to dynamic components and component attributes. And so now we can add attributes to this component and this will also copy for every instance of the component. So I'll click add attribute and we want the length. So this is going to output the current length of each component. And then I'm gonna add a custom um, attribute called cost each. And in this attribute, I'm gonna create a formula. So I'll, I'll type equals, I'll click on the length, and then I'm gonna do times, times 0.05. So this is always gonna be in inches. The unit will always be inches. So, um, we're, so basically it's saying five cents per inch. And so now that is the price for that specific uh, component. Now this is kind of the problem I was talking about with dynamic components. So if I click this shorter one, you can see it's showing the same exact price, even though it's much shorter than this one. Now that's because of an issue with dynamic components where, where after a change is made, you have to go to the menu and click redraw so it'll recalculate the dynamic component attributes. So obviously that's a big pain to have to do that for all of these components. But after doing some research, I found this post on the forum and Mike had posted this nice little snippet of code um, to redraw all selected components. So I just create a selection there and then go up to window Ruby console and then just paste that code right in here, press enter, and it goes through and redraws all of the selected components. So now each component will be accurately uh, showing the correct price based on its length. So the cool thing about using this method is you do get a live view of the cost if you have the component attributes window open. But if you select more than one component, you don't get that view of, you know, the sum of all of the selected components. And that's something that you can do with Quantifier. So dynamic components are cool to play around with, but definitely be careful um, when you're doing it. Definitely check multiple components and make sure the price is being updated um, as expected. All right, tip number five is pricing based on volume. So I added some insulation here to this uh, model and I used the same uh, method for creating the different size components. So these are all copies of the same component. I just used the scale tool to size them um, to what I needed. All right, so we're just gonna create a report. We'll add the entity name for the group and entity volume for the attributes. And again, we'll switch this to total sum, click accept, click run report, and we can see the total volume. Uh, we can ignore these first two. Actually, <clears throat> it's worth noting that, you know, when you're estimating uh, different woodworking projects, board foot is actually a pretty common way to price and purchase um, different types of wood. So, uh, board foot is actually a measurement of volume because it's basically um, the cost of one square foot of material that's one inch thick. So technically that's just a measurement of volume. So you can do the math and figure it out from there. But so in this case, we have 101,346 square inches of volume. It would be nice if we could change that um, unit, unfortunately, I'm pretty sure this always is gonna show inches. All right, and the last tip, tip number six, is going to be 
calculating based on area of material in your model. Now, this really isn't a practical approach, but I did want to share it because I don't think a lot of people know that you can actually uh, get the area of materials in a model. So I just added a simple sheet of plywood, four by eight, and applied a random material to it. And if you go to the in model collection and right click on any of these swatches, you can select area and it'll tell you the total area of that material in the entire model. So if I copy this um, sheet of plywood a few times, so we, we now have six copies and then I select the area, it updates and shows 192 square feet. Now keep in mind, you wanna make sure if you are using this to calculate uh, something like plywood, you wanna make sure you only apply that material to one side, otherwise it's gonna give you a double um, area calculation, which is not what you want. Now the drawback to this is you can't extract this area information in the generate report feature. So um, it's not really a practical way to extract data from your model. And you know, the other problem with generate report is it's just really hard in a real world project, I mean, this is kind of a very basic example, but like in a real world project, um, the limitations on how you can filter in generate report is extremely limiting. Um, and, it be and it makes it really hard to only look at the data you want because you're using groups and components not only for the actual objects in the model, but you're creating assemblies and collections of, of other groups and components. So it fills up the generate report window um, rather quickly. So it's just not a practical way to uh, extract cost from your model. But this is why I love using Quantifier. It just gives you a lot more flexibility in how you assign cost to the model. So you can assign cost by material. Um, so I think that was the D07. We can add a square footage cost of, I don't know, 50 cents, let's say. And so now it shows, obviously that was a underestimation, but now you can select the different things in the model and it'll show you the price in real time. And then as far as this stuff over here, you know, we could, we can select all of the insulation uh, components and we can create a tag for insulation. And let's assign all of those components to that, that tag. And so then we can create a layer uh, cost data line item. So we'll select insulation, add a line item, and we can calculate based on um, area, volume, weight, all of those different things. So it just gives you a lot more flexibility. If you wanna check this out, you can check out my previous video I just did. It goes a lot more in depth on this extension. But the cool thing is if you buy it right now, it's actually on sale for 50% off until August 31st. Um, so you can use my affiliate link at mastersketchup.com forward slash quantifier in order to get that discount. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't done so already, and I'll see you in the next video.